Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. Walter at the workbench. Well, boy, oh boy, I wish I could get paid by the tool makers for the stuff that I figure out. Today, I want to quickly talk about the mouth opening that we've always been told. The tighter the mouth opening, the finer the cut, the less chip out we'll get. We can control tear out. And how that is less important than how you make, fit, and tune your chip breaker. I'm going to try to do this fast. I hope you all can hang in there. I'm going to try to do this fast. So what is a plane? A plane is nothing more than a chisel in a block of wood. This is my jack plane that I made myself. It's nothing more than a single blade of steel in a block of wood and it has a certain amount of components. One, it's got the body. The body has a bed angle. The bed is where the blade sits. The wedge holds the blade to the bed. It has a mouth that lets the blade through. The tighter the mouth, the smoother the cut. It's my smoother. See how much tighter that is? All right. So this one will take a smoother cut, a finer cut with less tear out. All right. Wood planes, single blade, no chip breaker. The tighter the mouth, the smoother the cut. The tighter the mouth, the smoother the cut. Single blade, no chip breaker. Got it? Good. Now, this is a jack plane. The jack plane is, is meant to move most of your wood. So you can set this at whatever you want. Your chip breaker does not have to be set very tight. And look at the shape of the curls, okay? They're tight. Jack plane. Smoothing plane. Now you know I don't have a fond love affair for a, a smoother versus a jack, but for argument's sake, we're gonna go with the number four being a smoother and the jack being a number five, being a rougher. So here you have a plane where I'm getting really fine smoothing cuts. Okay? Very similar to my wooden smoother. Now, um, there is something that is missing from this plane and this plane, but I included it in this plane. It's called the wear bevel. The wear bevel means just that. It allows the sole of the plane to wear and the mouth will not open very much. Okay? Do you see the difference in the shaving? Try one more. Okay. Now, they don't want to curl up like a film canister. So what is the wear bevel? Okay, I searched on the internet and I found Caleb James had made this drawing right there. There's your blade, it's on the bed. There's your breast angle, which allows the shavings to come out to escape. But right there, you see there's a really tight angle. That's the wear bevel. 
What the wear bevel does is two things. The wear bevel keeps the mouth as tight as possible and allows the sole to wear and be re-flattened over time. So it's usually, oh, 3 16 quarter inch. It's enough so that you can get a lot of life out of the plane before you need to either resole it or make it into a scrub plane. Now, iron body planes don't have a wear bevel. Not to speak of. This front section, where the wear bevel would be, becomes so thin it becomes ineffective over time. If the plane manufacturers would add 3 16 inch of cast iron in there, thicken that, and put a reverse angle bevel 15 degrees off of 45 on the cast iron, then you would have an effective wear bevel and then it would make sense to bring your blade as tight to that wear bevel as possible to get the finest cut, the least tear out. But that's not part of the Bailey patent plane. What they did is they would put this in a machine and they would use something called a broaching tool which goes down in here and it cleans it out. So it's 90 degrees. <clears throat> it would be a little more difficult to machine it to that back bevel. So why is it that I can take my planes, which I lock the frogs down. I will not move my frogs forward ever. Ever. They get locked down and that's where they stay. It's the chip breaker. The finer your chip breaker is set to your blade and the, the best, you, you want to round that chip breaker off until it's almost vertical. Not quite. Maybe 10, 15 degrees off. Just at that front edge. Then you want to set your chip breaker right down close to your cutting edge and you'll get tear out free cuts. But remember, in some of my previous videos I mentioned, go back to, uh, I think it's titled Breaker Breaker and I think there's another one that says don't watch this, uh, planing against the grain. I did two or three or four of them, planing live oak. The closer you get with the chip breaker edge to the cutting edge, the finer the shaving you have to take. Because if you take too thick of a shaving, you're just gonna clog everything right up, all right? So there's, there's a fine line between how close you can bring your chip breaker to your cutting edge and how fine or how thick of a cut you take. So the chip breaker works at any position that you want it to, relative to the thickness of the shaving. Did I confuse you all now? <laughs> I'm confused. Does any of this make sense? I didn't even look at my old ECE yeah, they have a little bit of a wear, at, wear bevel, but they're really open mouth, really wide open mouth. If they were tighter, if they were tighter, if, if these were tighter mouth, man, they would be one heck of a smoothing plane. So, in conclusion, if you're making a wooden body plane, and I have all sorts of blades if you ever want to make a plane, <clears throat> don't forget to add in a wear bevel. Study it, research it, draw it out, lay it out before you begin building. 
because that wear bevel makes it like night and day. See that? You know, you, you see some of these planing competitions with the Japanese planes. I'm nowhere near them, but it's the same concept. Their planes are so tightly fitted. That's how they get those long, thin shavings. 5.4 microns is the thinnest one. Now, one last plane to discuss are your bevel up planes. The 60 and a half, the 62. And uh, there's a couple others out there. There's bevel up smoother, bevel up uh, jointer. Bevel up planes have no chip breaker. But they do have a microscopic, I shouldn't call it microscopic, a small wear angle or wear bevel, let's call it. Because look at this shaving. Why is this shaving doing this? Why isn't it curling up like the other planes? Why is it behaving more like the Japanese plane? Here's why. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a flat right here. And while it is mildly machined, I might go in on my diamond hone and just clean that up a little bit. That's your wear bevel right there. So what happens with the bevel up planes is you're shaving as it's coming up will hit that front edge. It will hit that front edge and it will want to shoot upwards. So that's why the adjustable th mouth or throat works so well on the low angle bevel up planes. It's because of that little sixteenth or three thirty seconds of an inch flat that's there. And I don't know as if anyone realizes that or not. But look at that. Doesn't that look an awful lot like this? <laughs> All righty, everybody. I'm going to let you go. But basically, don't worry so much about how wide open the mouth is on your iron body planes. Spend more time learning about your chip breaker, learning how to fit it, and learning how to tune it to get the cut you want. Not every cut has the same setting. Sometimes you have more blade exposure, sometimes you have less. Sometimes you're going to advance, sometimes you're going to retract. So, you have to figure that all out. That's, that's part of the learning process. But, the wear bevel, all my new planes that I have made include a wear bevel. And the performance skyrockets. So, that's it for today, everybody. I encourage you to go head out to your shop but before you do, if you found something useful, helpful, entertaining, give it the old thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And when you do subscribe, ring that little bell on the side. That way you get notifications I have a new video coming out. But more importantly, head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. 
Walter out.